Hey, so in today's video, I will show you how you can make this transition in Premiere Pro. You may have seen this transition before done by Daniel Schiffer, but done in Final Cut Pro. First of all, let me say that this effect is not that hard to do in Premiere Pro, but this is my way of doing it. And I haven't seen this done in Premiere Pro anywhere else on YouTube. And I saw a bunch of comments on Daniel Schiffer's video asking him or anyone else how you could do this in Premiere Pro. So this is my take on it. Uh, to you. First, I just want to say what I've learned doing this. The most important thing when you do this is the alignment of your canister or of your product when you are filming it. If you go and watch Daniel's video again, you can also see that his can isn't aligned perfectly. So you shouldn't obsess about this, but you need to know that it might cause some issues when you're going to edit it if it's not aligned and also if your product isn't straight and even. So I won't show you how I did the shots here because you can see that in Daniel's video. So we will just jump into Premiere and I will show you how you can make the effect in the post-production. Let's go. As you can see, I already made the transition here on the first clips here going from light brown to gray. I want the canister to rotate another round and turn into another brownish product, but I will have to adjust this a bit. I have already gone ahead and applied Alter Key to key out my green screen on all the clips. So depending on your shot, you need to add keyframes to scale, rotation and position and adjust them for the whole clip so it rotates in a straight line. This can sometimes be tricky, especially if you do like me and shoot a product which is bended a bit and therefore won't appear straight as it rotates. The way I normally go about lining clips up is by using the ruler function and set it up to match the product. You do this by clicking the source monitor, then you go to view and show rulers. Then you can simply drag out the lines to match the product, both from the top and the side. You can do multiple lines if you need to. And as you can see, it is not straight all throughout the clip, so I will have to adjust it. I usually start at the beginning of the clip and make sure it matches the rulers. In this case, I already placed the rulers to match the first clip with the canister which is good because we want all canisters to align in the end. Then you simply just go through the clip and change the setting to match it with the ruler lines. This is not perfect, but as I said, don't obsess about it. And a pro tip is that you want to have as little keyframes as possible to make the changes more fluent and less noticeable. For this transition, I just need half a turn on my Lazy Susan to match the tempo of the song. So I'll cut it here and bring it to my project. I will place the new clip underneath the clip with the gray product. And I will have to match them in a way so when it speeds up, it will transition into the brown product, just as Daniel did. But first, let's just remove the bounce card here on the right. You could just use the crop effect as Daniel does, but I will quickly make a mask around my product. Let's nest it first because Premiere sometimes goes crazy when you apply mask and use scaling and repositioning. So now I will quickly add a mask around the product. The next thing we are going to do is add the transition asset just as Daniel does it. I got my asset from Envato Elements, which I highly recommend because you get both stock video, photo, music, sound effects, graphic templates and much more with just one subscription. You can follow my affiliate link in the description and you will help me out a bit too if you want a really nice subscription based stock side with a lot of possibilities. Anyway, after we add the transition asset, we need to add a white color mat for the part where you want the transition to start. I will just duplicate this one from before, but you can also go to file, pick new and then choose color mat. Then you make it white and drag it to your timeline. It is important you have the color mat and the asset in the same track. You will see later why. Now we will add an effect to make this work. Go to the effects tab and search for track matte key and add it to the first clip. In my case, this is the gray canister. At the effects control, we need to make some changes. Go to composite using and change this to matte luma. And for the matte, you need to pick the track with your asset and the color matte. In my case, this was track four. So nothing is happening here and that is because I have made track 2 not visible. So let us enable that. Well now we have added the effect. To make it work we still have to align the clip in a way so when the first clip speeds up 
and turns away with the logo of the product, the new clip starts at the same speed and with the same rotation and reveals the logo so they blend together. I could have done this earlier just as Schiffer did, but I have not and this might be nice to see for some of you, so I will just take us through this quickly. I will disable the track matte effect and the asset track layer so we can see both canisters. Then I will change the speed of the brown canister by using keyframes. To do this I will right click on the clip, go to show clip keyframes and change it to time remapping. If I hold control or command and click on the line, I can add a keyframe. I will put the keyframe around where the can has to speed down again. I will move the line up to increase the speed so it matches the first clip of the grey canister. Let us see how this looks. I think the transition happens too quickly. We need it to start when the canister speeds up. I will just move it a bit further back on the timeline. And this is where we need the color mat, or else we will get a black screen. So we need to move it a bit more to match it better, and we will extend the color mat for the whole transition to avoid the black screen. This is looking better, I think. I will just move it a bit further back on the timeline. But I will adjust the keyframes to match the timing when the clip with the brown canister slows down. I think I like this now. And the missing piece from Daniel's tutorial, if you are a Premiere user, is done. The next part is to do as Daniel did, matching both clips even further so the transition and the canister don't overlap, stand out to be missing. Schiffer did this by scaling the bottom clip a bit. I must say this was not enough for me. I had to resize both clips and reframe them, but I think again it was because my canisters were not completely round anymore because they were bended. Also because I am using this effect two times in my commercial, I need to make sure my three different clips match and align. Anyway, I will nest my clip to avoid any strange Premiere bugs going on, and I will change the settings for position and rotation with keyframes and then match them as good as possible. When I have a result I am happy with, all that is left to do is to spice up the video with some more assets from Envato, and we have the same sort of transition effect as Daniel Schiffer did. Yes, it is. So thanks for watching, I hope you could use this video and that you learned something new, how you could do this effect in Premiere Pro and not in Final Cut Pro. If you could use this video or if you just want to be nice to me, please make sure to subscribe or leave a like or do both, it really helps a lot for a small account like mine. So anyway, I'll see you around, take care my friends.